I don't know about you, but my calendar runs my week. So if I find an event that I care about, I want to make sure that event gets on my calendar. But often there's not an easy or convenient way to do that. So I'm stuck having to go back to my calendar, creating a new event manually, typing everything in. And while that sounds like such a little thing, it adds up and it also increases the chances that I'm going to not do it or just forget to do it. So what if instead, when I find that event that I care about, I can easily click an add to calendar button and add it to the calendar of my choice. So we're going to see how we can easily add an add to calendar button to your website to make sure that your visitors are able to easily schedule your events on their own calendar. Diving in, we're going to do this inside of a React app, and we're going to use Tailwind to style our component. Looking inside the code, I'm working inside of a Byte React app where I already have Tailwind installed. And really, you can use any kind of React framework in order to do this. You can probably even use something that's not React, as a lot of the same concepts will apply, but ultimately, I'll be working inside of React. Now, what we want to end up doing is we want to add an add to calendar button on our page so that when somebody clicks it, they have the option to add the event to the calendar of their choice. Now, thinking about how we actually do this, the way that a lot of these APIs work is they're dynamically generated URLs that when you go to that URL, it's going to open the page with those details already seated. So if we look at Google Calendar, for instance, we can see I have this example here. We're using the calendar.google.com link. We have a bunch of URL parameters that are ultimately going to make up the, dip, the information that's going to get filled inside of the calendar. If I break this down to illustrate how this is actually working, we can see we have that base event edit URL, where then we can set our dates, which have both a start and an end. We have our text, which is going to be the title of the event. We have our location, of course, which is the location and the details, which is going to go in that bigger description space. Now, I'm not going to go through every single link in detail, but if we look at another example of Outlook, it's going to be the same thing where we can see that we have, aside from a few parameters that are specific to the service, we have, do we want to set it to an all day event? We don't want it in this case, but we have the subject, which is going to be, again, that title of the, the event. We have the body, which is going to be the description, and then we have our dates. The one that works a little bit differently is the Apple calendar, which is going to use an ICS file. And we can see here, it's a data text calendar string, where I'm not gonna go through this, I don't actually know too much about how this works, but ultimately it creates this data URL, which we're gonna use in order to download that ICS file, which you can then use to add it to your Apple event. Now, certainly we can dynamically create those URLs manually. I can create my Google URL, I can add the whole base of the string, I can dynamically replace the text with my uh, title of the event, but we don't wanna to have to do that for every single event. It's a little bit of a pain. And what if instead there's just an easier to use package to do that? And fortunately there is. Anand created this calendar link package, which allows us to easily import the modules for the different event uh, calendars that we wanna support. We can create an event as one single structure rather than trying to adhere to all the different formats. And we can easily pump out all those URLs, which we can then feed into our add to, add to calendar button UI. So let's start off and see how this works. So I'm gonna install this calendar link package. In my terminal, I'm gonna run npm install calendar link. And then I'm gonna get started with the example that they have here and just substitute my own information. So first I'm gonna import all these modules. I figure we probably just wanna support them all because we have them available and why not give the option to people who wanna use those services. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in all those different modules. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that event object as well as the Google method, paste that in at the top of my app. And then I'm gonna to wanna to store the result of this Google function in constant Google URL or really whatever you wanna name it. And we can already see that we're getting a TypeScript error because this function is expecting a specific type. So what we can do is they also export a calendar event type from the package, which we can then make sure that we type that event as the appropriate type. So now we're passing that in, we're making TypeScript happy. And now let's go ahead and console log out our Google URL to see what we get. If we check out our web console, we can now see that we do get that calendar link. And let me open that up we can see that it's starting to be filled out with all the details that we had inside that event object, including the title, we have the date, we can see that we get the body of this, and we can see that that's all coming from that URL, where let me take that into the text editor, I can break it down with all those ampersands, where we can see all the different event details that are getting passed in there, that's ultimately creating that templated URL to create that new event. Now, again, we can certainly do that right inside of our application if we didn't want to install that third party package, but it just makes it so much easier to not have to worry about the different formatting and everything for all those different events. We can create this one object and we can easily get all the different URLs. So I'm going to stay with creating all the URLs from this package. So let's create a few more. I'm going to get my Outlook URL. I'm gonna get my office URL, my Office 360, my Yahoo, and then finally my 
ICS. And if we rename these, we have Outlook, we have Office 365, we have our Yahoo, and we have our ICS. And now let's log out everything for a second. So if I grab all these different URLs, paste them inside, let's do console log each of those URLs. And if I look in my web console again, we can see that we do have all those links getting logged out. And let's test the Yahoo one, for instance. We can see that it similarly opens up a new tab with all those event details filled out, but now for my Yahoo calendar. All right, so we have all of our links generated. Now let's actually add an add to calendar button where we can then list out all those links and make it really easy to use. So I'm gonna start off by creating the list of links itself. So I'm gonna create an unordered list. I'm gonna create my list item. And inside, let's start with our Google URL where I'm gonna have my href. And I'm going to have Google Calendar, if I can spell that right. I also wanna set a target of blank so that it opens up a new tab rather than trying to redirect from the current page. I think it's a little bit better of an experience for this specific use case where you don't always want to open it up in a new tab. You really want to think about the navigation experience and how people expect to use it with the back button instead of just trying to close the tab. But for this instance, I think opening up in a new tab probably makes sense. So inside of the application, I have my calendar link and it still works as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and clone this one, two, three, four times where I have my Outlook URL, I have my Office 365 URL, I have my Yahoo URL, and finally my ICS URL. And we can name these how we want. For the ICS one, I think it probably makes sense to relate it to Apple. So I'm gonna say Apple, and I'm just gonna put ICS in parentheses. And alphabetically, it probably makes sense then to jump it up to the top. But then we can update the other ones. We have Outlook, we have Office 365, which again, I wanna make sure is in alphabetical order. And then finally, we have our Yahoo. So now that we have our list of links, let's actually add our add to calendar button, where what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide this list of links so that we only show them if somebody clicks that add to calendar button. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a simple button. I'm gonna call it add to calendar. And then what I ultimately wanna do is anytime somebody clicks this button, I want it to toggle the visibility of my unordered list. So the first thing we need to do is set up some state for that. So I'm gonna say import use state from React. Then we can say constant is open or whatever you wanna call it, set is open equals use state. And then I can say, if it is open, I'm gonna scroll down to my unordered list, I'm gonna say class name, I'm gonna say if it is open, I'm gonna say opacity 100, otherwise opacity zero. And the reason why I'm using opacity is later we'll see, I wanna be able to fade this menu in and out. I, want, I don't want it to just simply show and then unshow. I want it to fade in and fade out to give a little bit of a nice effect. And we can do that by using opacity. But now I need to actually toggle that state. So I'm gonna say on my button, on click, I'm gonna set, the function so that it says set is open, then I'm going to set it to the opposite of is open. And I probably also wanna make sure that I set the default value of this state to false. So heading back to the application, we can see that we no longer see that list of links, but if I click add to calendar and hit it again, we can see that it's toggling it in and out. Now going back for a second, we were talking about I wanted to transition it so it faded in and out, right? So how can we do that? So I'm gonna first set this up so I can add other class names to, this, uh, to the unordered list. And what I can say is transition opacity. And hopefully you're gonna be able to see it with the refresh rate and all, but now if I click that add to calendar, we can see that it just has a nice subtle fading in and out effect. So next, we're just simply adding those links right below the add to calendar button. And the issue is if we have any content underneath it, we can see that that content just gets added at the bottom, even when it's invisible. So what we actually need to do is we want that unordered list to overlay kind of like a tooltip or pop-up. So ultimately what I wanna do is I wanna be able to absolutely position my unordered list relative to the size and the location of the button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that absolute class to my unordered list, but then in order to be able to successfully do that with my button, I'm going to add a span here where I'm going to add a class name of first inline block so that I can hold the shape and I can add that relative uh, positioning and then simply add relative to that. I'm gonna then indent both the button and my span 
So when we come back to our application, we can now see that the ASDF was pulled up. And if we click add to calendar, we can now see it, but it's now overlaying on that calendar or that content. But of course we have a hard time reading this, especially if we have more content in here. So let's add a few styles to fix that quick. So going back to my unordered list, I think now's a good time to add my BG white. How about shadow? I want to make it rounded. I want to also add a border to that. How about we can add a little bit of padding? I'm going to add a PX of two and a PX of one. And I do think that's looking a lot better, but I personally prefer that the links to be left aligned. And I think we need a lot more space between the links, not just around the links. So in addition to all those other styles, I'm going to add text to left to make sure it's left aligned. But then let's go back to our actual list item links where let me go ahead and select all these. I'm going to break them down so it's a little bit easier to read. But then at the end, let's add class names to all this, where I'm going to say PX of four and a PY of two. Now, because we're working with inline elements as those anchor tags, I'm going to also add a block to this, where now we can see that we do have a lot of space around our links, and that's looking pretty good. But now we have another issue where we're having the the links actually break down to the other line and we want to keep them all on one single line for each of those links. So I can additionally add white space no wrap, which now prevents those lines from breaking down. And just being a little bit nitpicky here, I feel like we can use a little bit more vertical padding at the top of this. And it looks like because I added PX twice, which wasn't intended to be the case, I wanted to add a PY of one. And I think that's looking a lot better and a lot more consistent. But now we can easily see that our links are able to easily pop up over the content so that we can clearly see them, but it's also not interrupting the flow of the rest of the content. But we still have a little bit of a problem here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we're still having those links available for me to click because we're only setting the opacity to zero. We're not actually removing them from being able to be clicked. Now, looking at the content, you might be tempted to simply add a hidden here, but this comes with some problems. If we go back, we can see that we no longer have that issues of the link, but if we click add to calendar, we no longer have that fade in and fade out effect. To get around that, instead of using display for display block and none in order to hide it, we're going to use the visibility property. And to do that, we can say invisible. So that's going to set the, the visibility to hidden instead so that we still get the same effect, but we're still able to take advantage of that transition. So when we go back, we can click it and we can see that we still get that fade in and fade out effect. But now that that's working, I'm going to do some quick cleanup here. I'm going to get rid of that ASDF as we no longer need it. But I also want to make our button actually look like a button. So I'm going to just paste in a, a few simple styles here. Let me break this down quick class name where I'm just going to set my background of white. I'm going to set a border of a specific color. I'm going to round the corners, add some padding and just make the font bold. I'm going to also add a quick margin top of let's say four. And I think that was able to clean it up a little bit. We can see that it's still working just as expected. But now I just have one more thing that I want to do. And I just want to add some icons to make it a little bit easier to recognize which calendar I'm getting those added to. Now, of course, there's a ton of different ways that you can add icons. There's a ton of different packages and websites. I'm just going to use this simple icon site where if I search for a Google Calendar, we can see that I easily get a Google Calendar. I can go ahead and copy this SVG icon. But the one issue is typically when you copy SVG from the web, it's not JSX or React safe. So what I'm going to also do is going to SVG to JSX, where now I can paste in that SVG and make sure that I am getting a JSX friendly version of that actual SVG file or rather that shape. But now I can scroll down to where I have Google Calendar. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and see how that looks. And it looks a little bit big, so let's fix that quick. Now, there's a few things I want to do to fix this. First of all, I want to make sure that that text and the icon is going to sit side by side. So I can first change this to flex and let's set a gap of maybe two. But I also want to make sure I reset the size of the SVG. So I'm going to add a class name there and set it to how about width of four and height of four. And I think that's looking pretty good, but I need to center it. So I got to also make sure on that flex, I say items center and that's looking great. So let's replicate that on all the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that class name and I'm not going to break down all the other ones since we already know what that's going to look like. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all those lines and replace it. But then I can go ahead and grab the SVG for all those other services. So Apple, for instance, I can copy the Apple icon. And when you're doing this, make sure that you actually have permission to use these icons. Some of them have different brand guidelines that you'll be able to see within simple icons, but just kind of make sure that you're adhering 
according to the guidelines whenever you see the different brand logos. But I got my Apple icon here. We wanna make sure that I set my class name with a width of four and height of four. This one's looking good as well. But then I just went ahead and copied in all the other different icons that I found. I found one for Office 365, which I think I actually used the Microsoft Office. There was an actually Outlook one, but then I just used a generic icon for Yahoo because Yahoo doesn't actually have one available on simple icons. But I think that's looking a lot better. All the calendars look a lot more recognizable for the one that I want to be able to add it to. But we still have one more issue. If I either try to click around the outside of this menu, it doesn't dismiss, and that's a little bit annoying. So next up, let's see how we can listen for clicks outside of our calendar list so that we can easily dismiss it. 